Good morning, everybody. Uh, Tony Loray again, uh, looking to impart a little jewelry knowledge uh, to the consumer, to the collector. Um, questions I get asked all the time. Uh, it, it seems that people don't really realize this, but uh, the difference between white gold and platinum, uh, they're not the same thing. Um, they are two completely different metals, the same way iron and aluminum are two different things. Uh, the only thing that white gold and uh, platinum have in common is that they are uh, white metal, silver colored metal as opposed to uh, yellow gold. Um, but actually not really, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, my recommendation has always been, um, because of the price differences, and, and I'll explain a little bit about that also, um, for your regular average everyday jewelry, uh, not to spend the additional money on platinum to just go with your with white gold jewelry. It's going to be in a similar pr to price point to yellow gold jewelry. It's just a matter of your taste. I mean, a lot of uh, uh, jewelry, diamond jewelry in particular, is set in white gold because the white generally enhances the appearance of the diamonds and doesn't impart any color. Whereas yellow gold, even uh, to a slight extent, may impart the yellow color onto onto white diamonds. Um, but the designs are, are different based on, on things like that, on how the color imports on the diamonds and colored stocks. But anyway, I'm digressing here. Um, so my recommendation has always been for your better jewelry, in other words, uh, your engagement rings, your wedding bands, uh, things that you plan on having basically forever, uh, to go with platinum jewelry, uh, to have it set in platinum. But, and what, but why? Um, and that's what I'm going to explain here. Um, first of all, let me explain that there is, a, a, as I said, I want to explain that there is a little bit of a difference. Uh, platinum is a heavier metal. It has a, a, it has a higher specific gravity. The difference, again, between a, a one-inch cube of iron and a one-inch cube of aluminum, they're both a one-inch cube of white metal, but one is a heavier metal than the other. So it takes a little bit more platinum to make the same item in, that it would in white gold. Uh, and it's, so it's a denser metal. Uh, right now, if you follow the markets at all, pl platinum, whereas traditionally for years and years was always a more expensive metal, right now it's, a, it's uh, a little bit less expensive per ounce than gold is. Um, so how does, the, how does it still become more expensive? Well, I, as I expressed to you, it, uh, it takes more of one particular metal to make the same item. But also there's the purity factor, and I don't want to get into a whole science uh, uh, lesson here, but um, white gold is an alloy. It's only 14, uh, 14 carat per se, is only 14 parts of gold, or 58% gold, whereas anything made out of platinum is usually a minimum of 90% platinum, and the other metals that it's mixed with to make the 100% are metals that are probably more expensive than the platinum. So uh, in essence, it it brings up the price that way. Um, so now it's being more expensive, so why should I pay more money? Well, it's a, a couple of reasons. The durability factor being uh, the biggest one. You know, uh, white gold is, um, again, is an alloy. It is yellow gold that it that is mixed with uh, other alloys like silver and nickel to make it appear white. And so uh, when I start with talking about durability, the first thing with white gold is that factor that it is not actually a natural white metal. So what uh, yellow white gold in a 14 carat, uh, if it wasn't covered or electroplated with another metal to give it that nice chromy appearance, would actually appear a little bit yellowish or brownish in some instances. And it's all very well and good when it's brand new, but when there is wear on the item, especially on bracelets and the, uh, the shanks of rings, um, that coating, that uh, what we call a rhodium plating, because rhodium is the metal that is used to uh, generally to plate a white gold to give it that chromy appearance, will wear off over time and exposing the yellowish tone underneath. Uh, platinum has no such issues. Uh, platinum is a, a natural white color, silver color, a uh, naturally occurring metal. Um, so that if it wears, uh, it can just be polished and bring it back to its original luster. Uh, whereas white gold would have to be uh, polished and then replated. And uh, it, that cannot be done indefinitely. 
um, again, I'm not getting into a whole science lesson, but it can only be done so many times before it has to be stripped down and start for, you know, where the process has to be started fresh again. Um, also, white gold is a more brittle metal. So um, what does that mean? Well, that means that on a ring that you wear every day that, you know, you, you drive and you bang on your steering wheel, the your bottom of the shank bends, it's only going to bend so much and then it's going to snap in white gold. Or you're going to catch a prong and you can bend the prong, you know, you catch it on a, on a your jacket or something. And in white gold, it's more likely that it's only going to bend so much and it's going to snap off. Platinum can bend you know, pretty much indefinitely. I mean, you could squash your ring before it's going to, you know, unless, of course, it's something very thin. Um, so it can always be brought to a jeweler and restrained and repolished and made to look like new again, whereas uh, white gold might need other repair. In the case of a, of a prong, you know, a prong in platinum that gets bent up a little bit might be able to be pushed back into shape, whereas that same effort on white gold, it might have, it might have snapped it off and, the, and it has to be replaced, and it's a larger repair. Um, although I will say that repairing platinum because of the properties of platinum and the temperatures and things involved, if it does need to be, have to be repaired, it is a, uh, a slightly more expensive repair. There is, uh, so there is probably less repair going to be needed over time, but when a repair needs to be done, um, uh, in platinum, it'll cost you a little bit more, but in my estimation, it's well, it's well worth it for you to do that. Um, What else? Uh, biggest factor that I have with uh, the difference between white gold and platinum is the wearability factor. Um, you see a lot of people that get allergic reactions to metal. Uh, it's one of the reasons that I'm not having silver in this conversation because silver is a, a very allergic type of metal, uh, and it turns color, which these other, which white gold or and uh, uh, Platinum do not do that. They do not tarnish. Silver tarnishes is, and, uh, and it can leave tarnishes, tarnishes, and uh, can leave a mark on your skin if worn against the skin. And if you even if you just leave it in a drawer and don't wear it for a while, when you pick it back up, it's going to need some cleaning because it tarnishes. It turns black, which the other metals do not uh, do not do. But the allergic factor, you know, white gold, as I said to you, it's an alloy. It has to be mixed with something. And one of the things it may be mixed with is nickel. Um, and uh, nickel is a very allergic metal and um, people get all kinds of rashes and dermatitis and stuff especially in rings and earrings where it's very close where the items are very close to your skin uh, so white gold is a uh, I'm not gonna say highly allergic but more susceptible susceptible to somebody having an allergic reaction to white gold uh, and the cure for that generally is to make the same item out of platinum because platinum is a super hyperallergenic metal. I've even gone so far as the past to people with their favorite pieces of jewelry, earrings, to at least convert the posts into platinum posts. And that many times solves the problem or, or the ring uh, change the shank into a platinum shank and so it keeps the uh, allergic materials off the skin. So um, a few different uh, reasons. Um, but all in all, like I said, I think you're better off uh, leaving the purchase of platinum to your better items. Uh, again, the durability factor. The wear and tear on platinum, it is a much more abrasion resistance, uh, resistant, so that the items are not gonna wear out as quickly as they are in white gold. So again, if you're gonna have an item like an engagement ring, which, I mean, yes, nowadays people do ch change their engagement rings, but people are proud of the fact that they're still wearing the same engagement ring that their husband gave them and the same wedding band, diamond wedding band that their husband gave them, uh, you know, for 50 years or how many years? Hopefully more than that for you people in marital bliss out there, um, which is probably not going to be the case if you have your items made in white, white gold or yellow gold for that matter. And again, if it's uh, something that over time it, get, it gets a little damage or a little uh, or scuffed, it can easily be brought to a jeweler and they can uh, they can spruce it back up for you very quickly. Um, so that's that. Of course, any questions on that topic, you can send them on by. Um, speaking of questions, we have questions last week's um, uh, blog focused on uh, watch winders and uh, care of watches and storing your watches. Uh, so people did send in a few, a uh, few questions that I'd like to give a couple of 
go over a little bit and give a couple of answers to. Um, one is um, pertaining exactly to what I was talking about. Well, uh, author from Michigan writes, well, if I'm not going to use my watch winder box, then what, how am I going to store this box? How, how am I going to store this watch? Um, I'm going to say this kind of generally as it concerns all jewelry, not just watches. Um, things banging together in a box are no good. More damage is done to pieces of jewelry and watches because they're in a box and rummaging around and banging into other things. Um, you know, people wonder why their rings get scratched. Well, they have diamonds in a box and they're banging next to yellow gold. When you have the hardest substance in nature next to one of the softest ones and you wonder why things get scratched up. Um, you know, the same thing with watches. You have stainless steel and you have three or four watches in a box or in a drawer and they're banging around every time you open the drawer and then you wonder why your crystal gets scratched. Well, the glass is not, may not be as hard as the, as the stainless steel or the titanium or whatever it is you have your, on your watch and your gold watch is definitely not going to be as hard as the stainless steel. So banging them together will, will scratch them. So the simplest thing is to keep them separated for everything else. Put them in a, a little Ziploc bags so they're visible. You can see through them. Um, uh, so keeping them separate is the main thing. You know, I, I was talking about watch winder boxes, but there are other, um, they sell now these cases, watch cases that are, you know, almost like big wallets for strap watches or bracelet watches with little elastic bands in them with zipper cases. And, um, again, when I was talking about the safety issues of, you know, packaging your jewelry for criminals, at least these are slim and you can hide them and secret them in places where somebody may not find them also, but it keeps the watches individually separated. Okay. Um, John from New Jersey wrote in that he has a vintage paddock. Philippe, good for you. Uh, the glass looks foggy. Looks like there's dew in there or something. Is there something I can do to fix it myself? No. <laughs> you have a fine watch. Uh, this is not a toaster oven that you want to stick a fork into, okay? Um, uh, this should be looked at by a professional. First of all, I cannot diagnose what the problem is that you have uh, foggy crystal might be for a variety of reasons. You might have scuffed it. It might be the fog might be from the inside. You might have gotten some moisture, some condensation in there. Uh, it should be brought to a professional. Um, you're going to hear this a lot from me over times when we're talking about watches, but it's not, nece not necessary that you might have to bring your watch to the manufacturer. Now, if your watch, if you have a paddock for leaking, Philippe and it's under warranty, then I would suggest 100% like any other item. If it's under warranty, you're going to bring it back to the manufacturer. Um, it might be, in this case, you know, you might want to consult a reputable jeweler slash watchmaker um, that you're going to have to do your research on, you know, try to find somebody close by in your neighborhood. It might be, a, this might be a simple fix. You know, there are very competent watchmakers out there that are not working for Patek Philippe that We'll be able to look at this and diagnose your problem. And then you can ask him the questions. Is this something that I should take or that you recommend they take to Patek Philippe? It also depends on, um, you know, the particular models and the complication of your particular model. Um, if it's beyond the scope of the regular watchmaker, and he should be honest enough to be able to tell you that. And also how you want to keep your repair records. You know, if you only want any, every watchmaker puts his mark on the inside of a watch. Uh, if you want to keep those, you know, all paddock and have all the, your records, you know, uh, like your service records for your car all by paddock, then by all means, uh, bring it to Paddock Philippe. Um, you're the owner of a paddock. Uh, you have to understand that, you know, it's like fixing Mercedes or a Bentley. Uh, it's going to cost you more to bring it back to the, to the, uh, to the retailer that sold it to you. Um, those are your decisions to make. Um, Chris from Brooklyn writes, how often do you recommend I service my automatic watch and what exactly services are provided when serviced? <laughs> well, you know, that question is kind of like what I was talking to you about in the watch winder thing, that how much wear and tear is being put on the watch. I mean, is it a watch that you wear every day? Uh, let's back up a second. Does a watch require preventative maintenance? It's not a bad idea. Uh, I want to keep some of my watchmaker friends in business also. But um, if you wear a watch a good amount of the time, 
it's not a bad idea to wait uh, to not to wait until there's a problem that arises and if especially if you have a a, a, a relatively expensive watch whatever you consider to be expensive uh, it's not a bad idea on a mechanical watch to do a little preventive maintenance uh, costs depend on the depend on the watch um, it, what it will do is what preventative maintenance will do will prevent uh, larger problems from occurring and also a uh, watchmaker looking at this can tell if there's something happening you may not realize it that a little water got in there and, and a rust is now creeping through although it's not causing anything to happen immediately to the watch uh, but if it was taken care of right away maybe the stem would be, need to be changed and the rust doesn't start creeping onto other parts of the watch uh, you can't determine this only an inspection by a watchmaker can, can determine this um, but in that case, that simple fix would prevent larger problems down the line. Uh, it also keeps your watch clean and running in tip-top uh, timekeeping condition. Yes. Okay, somebody's trying to come over. Um, so the thing is this: um, if it's if it's not running, of course, then uh, you should have then you have to have it serviced. Um, if you're going to ask me how long in between, well, if you want wear your watch every day, probably it's probably a good idea every two years or so to have it to have it serviced, even if it's running correctly, to have it uh, cleaned, oiled, and lubricated. The question, though, also is what services are rendered. Well, having seen a watchmaker at work plenty of times, a watch is totally dismantled. Uh, a watchmaker will physically take apart the whole watch, uh, inspect it. Uh, put it into cleaning solutions to remove any of the old lubrications and whatever dirt might be on there. Um, reassembles, re-lubricates the pro the, in the proper points, uh, inspects the seals, uh, anything that's worn or broken, or he seems to, that it's gonna be a problem, he will replace them. Uh, you know, uh, very few watch parts, I'm gonna say, that can be fixed. Usually watch parts are gonna be replaced. Um, they will also look at, the, like I said, the seals on the watch. Um, people ask about waterproofing watches. Well, you know, if you have a watch that you bought as a diver's watch that, that you bought as waterproof and you've been wearing it for six or seven years, I can assure you that watch is not waterproof anymore if you've never had it serviced. Uh, things happen to the gaskets, to the seals from everyday wear uh, that you're not going to know is a problem until you go in the water and then it, you have water in your watch. So a little preventative maintenance will take care of all of that also. If you go to have your uh, your water-resistant watch, uh, I said waterproof, water-resistant is probably the more proper term, uh, serviced every couple of years, you won't have to worry about that issue. Uh, Scotty writes, from New Jersey also, writes, I'm uh, looking for a used Rolex. Have no idea what I'm looking for. Got any advice on where to look and what to watch out for? Unintended. Very good, Scott. He's a funny guy. Uh, first of all, you have no idea what you're looking for. Well, you've got to narrow down your choices. You know, Rolex um, has a number of different, uh, you know, styles of watches, from dress watches to uh, diver's watches. Um, so you really should kind of narrow down, do a little research and narrow down the particular type of watch that you want first, or the particular model even of watch that you want. Rolex is a company that, uh, you know, historically makes a model watch with improvements, but uh, they may make like a Submariner that was being made from the 60s, a diver's style watch that they're still making now. Uh, basically the same sort of design, you know, materials and, you know, uh, certain aspects of the watch, dimensions may have been changed slightly, but the overall look of the watch is the, is the same. So uh, you got to decide what type of watch you want first. I I'm, like the fact that you said you're looking for a used Rolex. I'm a big proponent in buying uh, pre-owned. Let's not use were used like yachts. There are no used yachts, just pre-owned when it comes to Rolex. Um, but um, you got to do some research. And the advice that I give everybody is, even if you got to pay a little more, you should buy from a reputable dealer. You know, what is it that you're looking for, not only in... Uh, in which style of watch, but are you looking for something that you're just going to wear, that you just want to wear every day, or are you looking for something that maybe is, you feel is uh, kind of an investment that's going to hold its value? 
uh, you know, different models and different watches from different time periods do different things. Do you want a collector's watch? Do you want a watch that you just want to say that you own a Rolex and it sits in a drawer and you only take it out to show your friends and fellow countrymen? Um, or do you want to, uh, like we talk about with uh, with cars, you want to buy a daily driver or do you want to buy, you know, a, a, a collector's mo uh, model one? So these are all decisions you have to make. But in any case, I say to you, uh, again, if even if it's going to cost you a little more, buy from a reputable dealer with a reputation that will give you a warranty and he can address any of the concerns that you have about uh, authenticity of the watch and service records and if all the parts are genuine or authentic, if these are your concerns. Reputable buyers. Give your business to people that know what they're doing and will stand behind what they sell you. And that's for this week's installment of Jewelry Knowledge 101.